Ryan Morrow is the National Security Analyst at the Clarion Project and joins us now to weigh in. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. So rehabbing ISIS radicalist or ISIS terrorist, we should say, is that possible? How would that be possible? <laughs> if it's going to happen, it's going to be them having an epiphany on their own. Uh, this isn't something that you can de-radicalize them from in 99.99% of cases mm -hmm. uh, because they're already on the level of extremism at a level 10 right. and they're part of essentially an apocalyptic death cult mm -hmm. and so to try to take that person and then turn them into a freedom loving peaceful person yeah. uh, is something that you just can't implant in their brains and by the way in the past previous programs have been sort of like trying to treat a heroin addict with crack cocaine I was going Where, to ask yeah. you that you know is there any previous program any uh, past history of success or failure or what does this even mean based on in the past what a lot of these programs have done is said uh, this specific group Group is bad so you shouldn't join them um, you should turn away from them um, and they try to redirect some of their extremism but the underlying extremism mm -hmm. the belief in theocracy hating Jews and Christians right. all of those themes still remain and so I have not seen a de-radicalization or terrorist rehab program that says we're going to go after the Islamist ideology as a whole and use that as the dividing line and the barrier for success uh, has to be that they are now believing in secular democratic values yeah. which is a high barrier, but anything below that, you are an enemy of the West. Yeah, and that sounds like being uh, turning them away from, um, from a certain area prior to being fully radicalized. Also, you were saying that one of the key questions is who is holding the territory where this is actually happening? Right, well, who, who's funding the operation? Right. We know specialists are unpaid. Uh, you look at the program and these terrorists go and they have a big TV, they play sports, they get entertainment, and they take a test, and if they pass the test, then they're considered to be de-radicalized and that might result in a reduced sentencing. So the program itself doesn't make a, a whole lot of sense, but then also who are these so-called moderates that you're bringing in? Mm -hmm. uh, because again, uh, if you're using the rehab analogy and that, that terminology, you might be bringing in another type of radical connected mm -hmm. to the Muslim Brotherhood uh, and s simply redirecting them from one group to another jihadist cause. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say it's like giving crack cocaine to a heroin addict and saying, problem solved. Right, right, because we do know, I mean, it's not just ISIS isn't the only radical group out there. Um, right, and, and in Syria, I mean, you have so many mm -hmm. radical groups mm -hmm. that even if for the moment you de-radicalize on these individuals, okay, they now go back into Syrian society, they they're surrounded yeah. by radicals. One more question, though, and we have, we're out of time. Uh, would this allow someone maybe to get into back to another country where they can say, well, he's been through this program, he's been de-radicalized, so now he can get a pass to come back home? Well, imagine having that on your resume right. as an aspiring terrorist. That's a concern. I mean, you can you can say, look, if it goes to that I step. prove I'm a moderate. I went through this program, right. and you should hire me for your university, huh. have me as a speaker. Uh, I mean, it's a good way to continue the cause in a different way. Right. If someone is more of a closet extremist and is smart about how they do this, we need to think about that. All right, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Some good stuff today.